Trump is about to write the biggest crypto check in history. And this could be the single most important event that changes the lives of crypto holders forever. And in a recent interview with Fox Business, Trump shared his plan and made it plain to everyone that not only is he pro crypto, but extremely bullish on the future of crypto. And now we may need crypto more than ever as a hedge against all of the uncertainty of holding fiat currencies as the national debt reached a new all time high at $35 trillion and is climbing already $125 billion above that. And real inflation remains insanely high. So even though the current reported rate is very low, right, everything still costs far more than it used to. This has left the majority of American consumers as feeling more pessimistic and many believe that's quickly changing with the advent of BRICS nations and their central banks quickly moving to implement their own CBDCs and bypass the use of the US dollar all together. But Trump seems to have a rescue plan that involves Bitcoin. So stay tuned through the video to learn what he said and how that's going to affect Ripple, XRP, and your crypto portfolio. In this video, we'll be covering consumer sentiment, the dollar, what's in store for the US, jobs, and the current state of the economy, and whether or not we're actually in for a recession or whether this was just a healthy correction in markets. And also, while you're here, head on over to bullrunners.com and subscribe to learn how to take advantage of our all market solution. So whether the market is bearish or whether the market is bullish, it doesn't really matter. You can discover how to earn more crypto in less than 10 minutes per day with the very first play to earn XRP game. So if you're feeling blessed and bullish, comment 777. And if you're going to be the richest person in your family tree, smash the subscribe button. Before we dive in, a quick reminder that the opinions in this video are for informational and educational purposes only and do not constitute financial, legal, or investment advice. All investments, including cryptos, carry risks and potential losses. Always do your own research and consult with a licensed financial advisor. We are not licensed financial advisors and relying on our content for financial decisions is at your own risk. By watching this video, you agree we are not responsible for any losses or damages and we do not guarantee any specific results or outcomes. Some of the links below may be affiliate links and we may earn a commission, which actually helps support this channel and helps us to create value based videos like this. We also hold some positions in the cryptocurrencies that we talk about, but that's only because we do what we believe in. However, this should not be interpreted as a recommendation for you to do the same. With that said, let's get into the video. Hello and welcome back to the channel. So if you've been paying attention, uh, crypto markets are down uh, pretty bad recently, especially if you're in any random altcoins, right? They've been getting hammered. Uh, and then Bitcoin even got hammered recently. And you could argue it's because the stock market is also getting hammered. In other words, a lot of the crypto market is still looked at and viewed as a risk on asset by asset managers and institutional players, right? They look at it and say, it's a little too volatile for my liking in an environment where everything's getting sold off. So although Bitcoin is being accumulated, and although people may believe the future of money and finance could potentially be Bitcoin and products like XRP, uh, it's still something that people don't want to hold into uh, uncertain times. And times are currently uncertain. The stock market was currently in shambles on Friday with all three major indexes falling more than 2%. And that's as of today and into tomorrow if you're watching this. They're also grappling with the disappointing earnings from mega cap tech companies headlined by Amazon. And just about every major company that I've looked at has actually come in lower on their earnings than expectations. So typically when you get a lower uh, reading than what uh, analysts expected, uh, that is a signal and it sends a shock factor that, you know what, maybe things are worse than we think. Uh, the sell-off began gathering momentum on Thursday amid a slew of weak data points. Jobless claims climbed near a one-year high at 4.3 percent while manufacturing data came in well below estimates so all of these things combined are pointing to a weaker economic uh, environment than we expected and what i would argue is that into the election 
the Biden administration really wanted to keep markets looking and feeling healthy, right? Because again, no one wins a re-election uh, when the economy is doing very poorly. So typically in the months of May all the way into November and election time, uh, the administration does everything in their power alongside the Federal Reserve to keep markets looking healthy and full. But when you have the level of incompetence of someone like Biden who argues Arguably doesn't even know yesterday from today, uh, you could say that maybe they've just kind of given up on that now that they have a new person on the ticket. And so I think markets are responding accordingly. We've seen a lot of sell pressure in the markets from our local high on the S&P 500 of 5670. Uh, we're currently sitting down at 5346. Now, many folks are fearful because as you can see, I have a 55 day moving average. I am on a daily time frame, And whenever we break down, it is kind of one of those things where you want to probably de-risk as markets can continue their downtrend in this situation, right? We had a false bearish breakdown and then we were actually uh, broke right back above that 55 day moving average and we remain there for a very large move from 5100 to 5600. Well, now we are not only below that, but we are below our actual trend line right here. You can see we were being supported. So there is a confluence of a breakdown. Now, this is something that we've mentioned on the channel. We've talked about how we're we're still bullish crypto and I could argue I still am uh, you just want to practice a bit of caution right because ultimately we did have from a daily time frame uh, and a four hour time frame. let's go to that four hour time frame we had a massive bearish divergence from here to here and arguably all the way going back we'll come here and put that on auto you can see going all the way back to these previous days back here right we had a consistent lower lows on uh, lower highs on the rsi uh, while we painted higher highs in terms of price so this is what you would call a bearish divergence from december 23rd to july of 2024 we had a, a long term uptrend uh, only to now start to see this whole thing and structure break down another one of the reasons that we were talking about this is because we kept seeing a lot of selling right and we're talking some massive massive profit taking and distribution day so we're talking right here we're talking right here on June 28th we're talking all the way through this we're just seeing consistently more distribution and so arguably it's gonna lead to a bit of a breakdown and you know XRP and Bitcoin are gonna feel that breakdown when we're talking major uh, you know tech stocks and companies in the magnificent seven alongside the S&P 500 which we're talking trillions and trillions of dollars are losing um, in terms of their market cap, well, then Bitcoin is obviously going to feel it as well. So it's no surprise. However, when you take a look at XRP and stack that over the chart on uh, the S&P 500 from its local high, we'll put a line right there. OK, then we're going to go ahead and pull up XRP. And from that day specifically, you can see I'm going to try to get it lined up right there um, that XRP is currently down 3 percent while the S&P 500 is down 5 percent. So, yes, it's going to sell off with the S&P 500, but it seems that there is tip, uh, currently a bit more strength and support in the price action on XRP, which is a good indicator that we've probably had a lot of people who were already going to be sellers that have sold. There's probably not as much leverage in XRP. Uh, and then third and finally, I think people are more bullish XRP over the next month, two months, maybe the, the through the end of the year than they are on the S&P 500. So that is a very good signal. And we could argue it's probably the same for Bitcoin. Now, currently, Bitcoin is not in a price range to really worry about. Yes, we do have this current downtrend where we're consistently seeing sell pressure on this uh, line. But we also are back in this range where even if we did break down to the $5,600 level, I wouldn't be too worried. And I would argue that this would be a very good time to buy and accumulate. Now, if you watched our previous video, I said the same thing about XRP. I mentioned that the 52 to 54 cent range would be a good time to 
buy. So between this range and this range, and not only did we smash that target, right? If I could get a dang line on there, um, but it looks like it's actually being supported far more than Bitcoin. So I will say that it's potential that it continues to break down a bit and you see some price action ranging in this range right down to 47 cents. But I think anything in this range would be a good time to accumulate when you consider its strength relative to the S&P 500 and relative to Bitcoin. Now let's move on. Now, recently we did talk about how the U.S. Uh, has an insane amount of debt at $35.12 trillion, and it consistently continues to climb as our own government continues to spend money, right? And our debt to service payments are like 75%. That means that every single bit of taxes they take in is going back to pay or service the debt that they're issuing. Uh, and they're doing that by spending money money in different countries, right, by, uh, you know, writing different bills into law and getting whatever they want out of the American uh, consumer and taxpayer. And so ultimately, people like me and you suffer as this national debt continues to grow. And many people have used this as an excuse to say this is the downfall of America. But let me set the record straight. It can be the downfall of America, but many countries are currently also suffering, uh, and arguably worse when it comes to their debt to GDP ratios uh, and, and arguably just in terms of their economic growth over the long haul. So yes, we are a nation that you know rose to stardom in a very short period of time. And yes, I do believe we're on the other side, maybe declining, but I don't think we're gonna crash just yet. And I have a few things to point that out. The first thing is the GDP. As you can see here that the US still ranks number one in terms of its gross domestic product by the millions in terms of the year. In other words, in 2022, we were sitting at about $25 billion of gross domestic product. By 2023, we're sitting at 27. And this is the estimate, right? This is going to range and vary. It's virtually impossible to get a direct number anymore when it comes to uh, governments and uh, arguably economies. Uh, otherwise, every economist would be right, right? But very very few economists ever are. Uh, and so you kind of just have to follow the money and then really think in terms of your basis, right? What what does this mean for uh, supply and demand? What does this mean for taxes and the incentives around that? So on and so forth. And this year we are on track for a 28.7 uh, trillion dollars. So our debt far outweighs our GDP, but that doesn't mean that we can't close that gap. And Trump has proposed something with Bitcoin. Uh, then you have our second closest competitor at 18.5 trillion. Then you have the best and biggest producer in the entire European Union, Germany, at 4.5. So look at the major gap in difference. And then you have Japan. And these are all major economies of scale. Uh, you could argue first world nation, first world nation, first world nation, right? Uh, developing nation and close to first world nation and then india is a developing nation but they have such a large population that they're sitting at number five so you know when it comes to people saying the u.s is going to collapse the reality is the majority of the trade and infrastructure and business and uh everything when it comes to a, an economy of scale is currently being conducted in the u.s and if you were just to add up everyone past you know number six all the way down we still outweigh them so to say that the U.S. is going to crash, I think, is just short-sighted. I think there's a lot of media out there that kind of uh, promotes that because then it gets you excited about what the future potential is for other currencies and opportunities. But at the end of the day, the USA is here to stay. It's not going away. It doesn't mean that it's not going to decline. It simply means that it's too big to fail currently. Uh, and even if, for example, there was a, a major issue in our economy, uh, our next portion of the economy would be war. And war is very profitable. Uh, whether it's for you know the the military industrial complex or the American consumer, uh, when you look at what happened in World War II, that actually was a boon on the economy, right? There were a lot of jobs created in that time. Now, when you look at the GDP, or sorry, the um, consumer GDP or the list of the largest consumer markets in the world, we still have a twenty point four 
trillion dollar consumer market. In other words, as a percentage of our GDP, we're sitting at about 70%, which means we spend more than just about every other country when it comes to their consumerism, except for Mexico. And it looks like a few others down here, but these are so small when it comes to Bangladesh and the Philippines, it doesn't really, you know, make a dent in the world economy. The US is by and large the number one uh, buyer and purchaser of goods, which means none of these countries, whether the European Union, China, or India, or Japan, or Germany could even do well without us, right? If we were completely wiped off the face of the map, I think all economies would generally suffer. So this is why the dollar has remained relatively strong. When you look at the dollar, it's not weak. It's also not strong, but this is the dollar uh, tracked against a basket of other currencies. And since 2022, we've just been ranging, which means other other currencies have gained on us then we've gained on other currencies but arguably it's not gonna go away we did reach a low back in like 2008 uh, as of right now people are dumping money into the dollar uh, to potentially hedge against uncertainty and risk on assets and as of today the dollar dumped a bit probably because of US Treasuries and the price action around those but generally speaking here I don't probably see us uh, at any point in the near future dumping to a hundred dollars uh, or a hundred in terms of the dollar reading now when you look at the dollar right we're talking about uh it's it's weighed against a basket of other currencies so for example 70 or 57.6 percent of the weight is in the euro they're one of our major trade partners in the west then you have the japanese yen at 13.6 then you have the pound uh gdp a uh, gbp you have the canadian dollar the swedish krona and then the swiss franc uh, and this is probably weighted based on the uh, level of economic activity in those areas and also probably weighted against the total size of their economy and how it affects ours. In other words, the dollar against all of these has maintained its range. So to say that it's just going to go away or whatever, fine. But at the end of the day, that's just an opinion. Number one, two, the data shows that the U.S. is relatively strong. And three, it also shows that people are very bearish uh, and feel that that sentiment of negativity in the future of the U.S. economy, probably because we are spending like we're spending spoiled uh, trust fund babies who have all of the money in the world. Uh, but that's not necessarily indicative of us going away, especially if there is a backup plan. And Trump has a backup plan. Let's listen to what he had to say. What about crypto? You spoke at that crypto yeah. conference last weekend, and you said that you'd like crypto to have a more prominent uh, space in America. How do, how well, about uh, you have to understand about crypto. Crypto is a very interesting thing, uh, very high level in certain ways, intellectually very high level. But if we don't do what China's going to do, China's going to do it anyway. But if we don't do what China's doing it, China's already doing it. And uh, if we don't do it, other countries are going to do it. So we might as well be at the forefront. And we, uh, there are people in crypto that are very, very um, smart people who do love our country and they think it's uh, they think it's good. Who knows? Maybe we'll pay off our thirty five trillion dollars, hand him a little crypto check. Right. We'll hand him a little Bitcoin and wipe out our thirty five trillion dollars. But how do you want it to be more prominent in America? How, how will that work? Oh, it's going to work easily. It's already prominent. It's moving along. It's very loosely regulated. That's one of the reasons it's moving along. But it is a different form of a currency. And it's going to end up benefiting the country. But if we shut it down, like, you know, Biden's trying to shut it down, Biden doesn't have the intellect to shut it down. Can you imagine this guy's telling you to shut something down like that? He has no idea what the hell it is. But if we don't embrace it, it's going to be embraced by other people. You know, it's a massive thing already. Did you read where it's bigger than any company in the world already? I mean, if you look at the market, it's bigger than many countries. It's it's a very big thing. If we're not going to be the leader, we have the people that are the leaders. I know some of them. They're very smart. And if we don't embrace it, other countries are going to embrace it. So this got people really excited. The fact that Trump is saying, well, maybe we'll be able to pay off our debt of $35 trillion with a bit of Bitcoin. And arguably, right, people are looking at that and then looking at the market and saying, wait, wait a minute, I don't see the congruence, right? Uh, the market is dumping while 
Trump is being very bullish. Now, to be fair, it doesn't sound like he fully understands everything in crypto, but one thing he does understand is the technology is here to stay. It has performed very well. It was loosely regulated with retroactive attacks from the SEC. In other words, they didn't, they failed to regulate it. They failed to create clarity, and then they go and attack anyone who's trying to operate and figure out what is legal and what isn't. Uh, and we saw that with XRP. We saw that with many other companies and, you know, portions of Ethereum. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, what he does understand is that other countries are simply going to embrace it and we can't allow that to happen. We have to be the number one country in the world that embraces innovation and new technologies and crypto. And so the reality is they are starting to look at it more like a gold. So this feels almost oddly similar, uh, and there are a few differences, but it feels oddly similar uh, to Nixon when he ends the convertibility of U.S. dollars to gold and announces a wage price control. This was in the 70s. In other words, they actually hopped off the Bretton Woods system, which basically pegged the U.S. dollar uh, to gold. So right here, you can see that the U.S. dollars were convertible to gold at a fixed exchange rate of $35 an ounce. The United States has the responsibility of keeping the price or keeping the dollar price of gold fixed. Now, one major key difference between Bitcoin and gold is the fact that it is far more decentralized. Now, you can have a lot of central entities like BlackRock, like the U.S. government, like Germany recently, which they idiotically decided to sell all their Bitcoin, um, buying a boatload of that up and basically running a monopoly on the market because at any point in time they can spook markets by potentially dumping it onto exchanges or whatever. And ultimately, governments that are powerful have have always had the opportunity to do that, whether it's fiat currency or crypto. But the difference is there are far more players uh, and far more transparency. At the end of the day, back then, we didn't have the level of transparency that we do in terms of an actual blockchain. So it's going to be harder for there to be manipulation from the Bitcoin standpoint. But that doesn't mean that Trump couldn't go say, hey, we're going to buy 5% of the total supply. You know what? Matter of fact, we'll change it to 10% of the total supply. And the government does have the money to do that considering we can trade bitcoin for the dollar and so if they are printing dollars they can just print as much as they want to buy bitcoin and bid it up and up and up so in general that would be extremely bullish for the price of bitcoin uh, relative to dollars so anyone who holds bitcoin is going to benefit from that and then it would also be beneficial to the entire crypto market and xrp so here is the Gold Reserve Act in action back in 1934. Yes, we have the data for that. And I'm on a monthly time frame on gold itself. And as you can see here, we had a fixed price of about $35. Then under the Bretton Woods Act in 1944 or 1945, I can't remember, nor do I care to look it up right now. You can do that yourself, Bretton Woods. Um, we actually did peg it to $35, but now it was convertible to the U.S. dollar. So essentially, the, the U.S. dollar after World War II became the world reserve currency. You could take gold, convert it for the dollar. Now, what I'm really after is what happened after we got off of that. So as you can see here in 1971, with a bit of uh, you know volatility, I don't know why we had that volatility, probably in for a history lesson. I do know that in 1971 under Nixon, we actually ditched that, and this is what happened to gold. People started buying up gold in the droves. And yes, it is a slow moving asset. And yes, I kind of agree with Warren Buffett. If it's not value producing or it's not uh, a new novel technology, then it's probably not something I would love to invest into long term because honestly, I would be dead by now, right? Like we're talking back here. Yes, you would have made a lot of money, but you could have made a lot more money on a lot of other companies that are value producing. Well, Bitcoin uh, is like the new version of gold, far better technology uh, for many different reasons reasons is far more divisible you can carry it all around the world in a matter of seconds you can it's peer-to-peer -peer transfer right it's it's just an amazing technology but that said it's very similar to gold and so whenever they got off of that right they said, okay, we're going to peg it here. Uh, then the value started skyrocketing. And I would argue, since the government can't just take Bitcoin and do this, but we've expressed bullishness on it, then I, I would argue as they continue to buy it, there's no other thing within it for, for it to naturally go up.
Now combine that, right, the fact that the government wants to accumulate Bitcoin uh, with, uh, you know, the exchange reserves consistently declining. I mean, even a day ago, we were talking about how we were basically at our previous lows. We are hitting new lows as we speak. So whoever is looking at Bitcoin, whether it be BlackRock or institutional investors or family offices, uh, any major investors, it doesn't matter. Whoever is looking at Bitcoin right now is saying, I believe this is a hedge against reckless spending, a hedge against inflation, a hedge against uncertainty. This looks like the future of money or at least value in the world of a, in a new digital era. So that said, uh, this is extremely bullish and it's not just bullish for Bitcoin. Here you have one of the developers and I think one of the co-founders of the crypto quant platform. Yeah, the founder and CEO. And he basically pointed out that whales are preparing for the next altcoin rally. Limit buy order volume for altcoins excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum is increasing, indicating that strong buy walls are being set up so as the limit buys continue to incline excluding bitcoin and ethereum because those guys just take up the majority of the market share what's happening with everything else that means xrp that means solana that means ada that means all of the majors and everything you can possibly think of people are setting their buy orders and it's not just people it's also institutions a breakdown by coins would be sharing the indicators and then here he actually shares the chart and the data and I'm going to go over here you can see that this is the actual chart so people are looking at prices somewhere in these ranges from that previous high up till present day and saying we are going to start to buy and accumulate here which means that there is money on the sidelines ready to buy any and all dips you take that and combine it with the current price action right here right we are not below or breaking down if anything we are seeing a bit of resistance but we're not seeing any major bearish signals this in and of itself was but we only got bought right back up uh, and above that range at fifty six thousand dollars which means that people probably had shorts here and then were shorts that would have been liquidated here the price broke below they got liquidated and then people started buying that back up so if anything, this was a very healthy reset of leverage in the system, while this is just the natural intermediate term trend since March. But generally speaking, right, if we continue to remain above the $56,000 level here and arguably the 54 cent to 47 cent range on XRP, things do look healthy and they look like good times to accumulate crypto for that next major move up. And the last indicator, if you didn't already notice it, is this hash ribbons indicator. In bull markets, whenever we get a capitulation phase and a hash rate uh, that declines here, right typically it's a good indicator that it's a good time to buy now here you wouldn't have known but this was the start and as you can see it was a great buy signal yet again in this current uptrend right here right you saw that we had a buy signal great time to buy in similar fashion we had quite a long capitulation phase only to see a buy signal and the hash rate recover so this is a really strong indicator that anything right now would be a good time to buy so with all of this said, what's actually going to happen in the future? Well, we don't know. But what I do know is I, I really do believe that it's a good time to accumulate your favorite cryptos at good prices. One. Two, I do believe Donald Trump is still going to win the election no matter how many polls. Uh, you know, I recently read a, a Twitter post that basically said polls are there to sway public opinion, but they don't necessarily reflect it. And I do believe that to be true when you look at the, the polls against Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton back in the day, right? She was by and large expected to win, yet she lost tremendously. And then it was a shock to the world. And in similar fashion, I would argue if he does win this election, I do think he not only is he going to be pro crypto, but he's going to find some unique and creative ways or smart people, which he called people in the crypto space smart in, in on that video, right? Uh, to work out our debts in terms of crypto and Bitcoin. And that would just create some insane buying pressure. So if you enjoyed the video, 
and you want to take advantage of our all market solution, again, whether it's a bear market, bull market, doesn't matter, then head on over to bullrunners.com. Go to the description below to discover how to earn more crypto in less than 10 minutes per day with the very first uh, play to earn XRP game. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you haven't already, smash the subscribe button. Leave us a like. It helps the channel out. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video, my friend.